I think, well, I was first born, so I was kind of born into the whole leadership role. It was thrust upon me at birth, but um, having my younger sister, we used to joke around that um, I was the queen bee and she was the worker bee, <laughs> and that was the dichotomy of our relationship, which she would laugh, but it was just kind of naturally fell into that role. And then with my group of friends growing up through high school, I had the same friends from second grade all the way till graduation, the same five girls, and I was always the motherly leader figure I go, they come to me for mentorship. So it was something that I was always a natural born person to be in that role. And that's something that I always kind of took that leadership role because I enjoy helping others achieve their full potential. I think that is really what brings it home for me. I want to help others move and that's what motivates me. I want to help other people reach their full potential because I feel like sometimes it really takes a lot for someone to realize their self-worth and what they're capable of and how strong they are. People don't realize their own strength. And so if you can bring that out in them and if you can awaken that in them, they can achieve so much more. And that is where it's at for me. That is what like makes my heart swell. That's why I get up every day is helping other people reach their full potential. You know, I just got back from a conference in Baltimore for AFP International, it's Association of Fundraising Professionals. And we heard what Bebe Goldberg speak at this. And she had talked about you know, on the airplane, if it's going down, they have that video, the instructor, instructional video at the beginning where the air mask drops down and you're supposed to put it on yourself and then help other people. More often than not, someone who's a leader, and I struggle with this myself, it's really hard to put that mask on myself because I'm always trying to give it to other people, give you the oxygen, give you all of myself. And that can be so draining at times. And that's a potential for burnout. So it's something that you have to recognize. You actually, I have to remind myself to put on my own oxygen mask before giving it to everyone else. And that is something that is honestly a conscious effort. It's so unconscious for me and subconscious for me just to be able to help others and give every, give all of myself to other people. But when it comes to actually like investing in myself and giving back, that's hard sometimes. So I think that that, I guess, is a characteristic that I like to see in my mentors. I want to see that they are just as passionate about others and just as passionate about giving because that to me is a very strong person. Inspiring growth in others, bottom line being able to help them move forward and reach out and just be able to grow. You know, you're not a leader if you're sitting there and you're yelling orders out of people and you're sitting there and just people fear you. That's not, it's an open relationship of being able to engage and inspire and help someone. I like helping others, so I don't see it necessarily as um, walking into the classroom and being the person who possesses all the knowledge and saying that you, you know, I have all the answers. Come ask me the questions here, all the answers. I like the fact that I can help people to open up opportunities for their future. And because a lot of my teaching is local teaching, I get to teach people who I had at that after school program in elementary school. They're now in college and they walk into the classroom and I, I just, I'm so thankful that they know that there's opportunities for them out there and that they're local opportunities and that they can afford those opportunities. So it makes me feel like I'm contributing to the community because hopefully they're going to either, you know, be positive people in the community here or they're going to take that elsewhere. So it's it's a good feeling seeing like things are starting to come full circle. I've learned in you know, my time doing this that when I first entered the classroom I did think that the role of teacher was to be the expert and that I always wanted to to be the expert by saying that, you know, that's why I'm in this role, that's why they put me in front of the classroom because I'm the expert. But what I've seen was that, you know, being in the classroom is just helping students to help themselves. We're all in it together, we're a team, and it shouldn't be something separate and sometimes that's hard because you want to get emotionally involved and, and you want to really connect with people. The idea is for my students to see that their success for themselves is just as important as it is to me. I can't want it more than they want it and so one of my jobs as the leader is to show them that by making the choice to be there that they have to want it just as much as you know or more so than what I want for them. You know I don't make them successful. I give them the tools for them to be successful because I'm still going to be there next semester and the semester after that and I'm still going to be teaching and finding the next student to hopefully you know open up those doors of opportunity and I want to see the ones that are there go through the door. I want to see those those students that come through first move along so I try to help them to want that for themselves. My perspective on leadership is that I deal with a lot of students and I have a lot of students that I have been in their position 
and especially a lot of the female students. So what I try to do is I try to find common ground. I try to show them that yes, I am in front of the classroom and yes, I have this professional position, but I want them to know that I have a lot of the same day-to-day -day activities, um, the day-to-day -day triumphs and struggles. So when they look at me, they should see a working mother and there's no such thing as balancing it perfectly and there's no such thing as having it all. And that there are times when you're not going to want to do something, but you have to do it. And so I try to show them that, that, you know what, when I come in today, maybe, you know, something happened at home or maybe something's going on professionally, but I am still here. So I show them by example, and a good leader is going to say that we can be resilient, we can be strong, we can be determined and overcome things and at least be present, be there. You never stop learning. You learn every day. You learn until the day you die. Being honest, trustworthy, and loyal. Those are the three biggest components that I learned growing up and I passed it on and basically that's how I run my business and that's how I always want to empower the younger people who come out of culinary school and they're like, oh, I know how to do this. And it's like, wait a minute above anything and everything. When you walk into that kitchen, when you walk into a new job interview, you wanna be trustworthy, honest, and loyal. You want to let your employer know, and you want, one day you are going to be that employer, and you want to have those, um, those, those three huge words standing behind you and saying, this is what I am, and if I can do this for myself, you will do this for yourself one day. My standards are never high enough. And as you grow and you mature, you even become harder on yourself because you want to show the people who you're mentoring that you're good, but you're humble. And then you might be working with someone who else, maybe who is 60 the next day. And they're really good. And they're showing you techniques that you're like, why didn't I know this? Why, why have, has no one ever showed me this? So I always keep my standards. I strive every day to meet the, the to, to, to be the best person I can be. And above all and everything, when I say I will give you 150%, I will give you 150% of my knowledge, my time, and my work. And I also will give who I'm mentoring or, or who I have working with me and at that specific day, on that specific day, 150% of my knowledge. I'm not a type of culinary culinarian that wants to keep all that knowledge to herself. So I want to show it and I want to like spread the love. You know, why keep it and take it to the grave with you? Show them the tricks so that the next person that they mentor are going to be knowledgeable, they're going to be trustworthy, they're going to be honest, they're going to be loyal. And it's just a chain reaction. Leadership is those three words I just mentioned to you. Leadership is being honest to yourself, being trustworthy, and being loyal. Because if you can't be those three things to yourself and know who you are, how can you ever mentor anyone else? How can you ever show anyone else leadership? That's leadership to me. Leadership is knowing who you are, knowing how to be honest, and knowing how to empower other people and showing them those three simple words. Those are very simple, but to carry them out in everyday life is another story. Saying it and doing it, two completely different things. Every day I aspire to be a leader. I believe that leadership, I believe in servant leadership, so I believe in putting other people first, helping other people find their gifts and utilizing their gifts. It's not just finding them, but helping them play, put, putting them places where they can truly utilize those gifts. And it's all about teamwork. You can't, leadership is truly about recognizing the gifts that people in your team are bringing to the table and then properly using those. It, my team is amazing. I couldn't do what I do without my team. 
and I say this, I'm like the limo driver. So I go out and find these organizations, and then once I find them, I bring my team in to work with them. And the sky's the limit. We don't have, there's no organization that's too big for us to work with or too small for us to work with. It's really where God puts me is kind of how I feel. And I have an amazing team. I have an amazing risk architect called Colton. I have Connie Gerba who handles all my benefits and their compliance issues and that type of thing. And I learn from them every day. They're my brains. They're really essentially my brains to the risk management. I'm the face of the company, but they're the people that work behind the scenes. So My gifts, I believe, are recognizing talent and gifts in other people and then bringing those to light. Sometimes people don't realize the gifts that they have. And I truly look up to the president of our company because he seems to recognize gifts in people and he thinks outside the box. And I'm a big believer in allowing people to fail and learn from those mistakes and try again. And so, you know, when I look at my role within my organization, I play lots of different roles. But my main role is to unite everyone as a team. I'm a cheerleader. I'm, I was never a cheerleader, but I was actually a jock. But um, yeah, I, I, I think that you have to inspire people. You have to give them passion and reason to do things. And that's part of my job. When I present an organization for us to work with, I have to essentially sell it to them and bring all the points of what we're going to do back to the team and allow them then to go to town with, with utilizing what they're able to do. You know, one thing I've recognized, and this is across the board working with manufacturers and in healthcare and in nonprofits, there, there are definitely different generational styles and you have to understand that. And you also have to understand where they're coming from. So it's understanding people, but when you, you're talking about empathy, it's really, truly wanting to get to know them and understand their issues. And you're right, in insurance it is cold. Most people view it as cold and just, basically it's just a commodity to most people. But it's truly not. And when you understand what the depth is to what they're trying to protect, then it really becomes personable. And you, that's where you get to know them and bring out their gifts. It's so, it's, it's fun. You know, I, I believe in utilizing the skills of others, utilizing the strengths and building upon other individuals to really promote excellence. And it's been my experience that when the people who are on the front lines are involved in the process, that that's when you achieve the best results. Um, it has the most sustainable outcomes and it engages them. It gives them a sense of pride and accomplishment that when you provide step-by-step um, -step direction, that doesn't deliver the same results. You know, it's my job to be upbeat, okay? I need to be passionate about what I'm doing. And I was just thinking about this the other day because one of the things that I've learned the most along the way, um, the biggest difference that I can see in myself between when I started and now, is that I actively listen. I felt that I needed to be the one who was the savior, if you will, the one who had all the answers, uh, the one who provided the the step-by-step. -step. It was basically I was responsible for all of the details and I needed to be that go-to person. And I think what I realize now is that that's not my job. My job is to develop my team to get there, to develop my team to have the um, excellence, if you will, the ability and the passion to get to where we need to go. So that's what I pride myself in, is that I think that I actively listen to myself, or to my staff. I think that you have to train yourself. I think that it's hard. When other people are talking, your gut reaction tends to be, well, well how am I going to respond? What am I gonna say next? What's gonna be my reaction, if you will? And it's tough to just sit back and truly listen. And I think that that's the way that you engage your staff. That's the way that you build trust. That's the only way that they're going to have confidence in you as a leader, is that they know you are genuinely interested in what they have to say. You have to have passion. Without passion for what you do, it's my, you're never going to be great. You, you can become very good at something, and you can have outcomes. 
um, that, that show that you're doing good work. But without the passion behind it, your team's going to notice it and you're not going to get the excellent delivery that you otherwise would. Um, who wants to do something every day that they're not passionate about? Leadership to me is coaching, it's mentoring, it's not being the best, most well-rounded individual, it's having the most well-rounded team, having the best team, and I think that produces the most effective, most excellent outcomes.